welcome back to my channel. Today I am sharing with you guys how to use the Cricut Design Space app on the iPad, which I'm really excited because they changed Cricut Design Space to two, from two to three, but they did not change the app. So conveniently, I just put the Design Space 2 tutorial up and then Design Space 3 came out. But the app is still the same, so I was really excited to hear that and I wanted to go over all of it with you guys. Plus, you guys asked me for this video, so I'm really feeling accomplished today that I actually got it done. And I want to say, you're welcome. So, uh, yeah, let's go. Alrighty, guys, so today we are going to learn the Cricut Design Space app, which is on the phone as well as on the iPad. And today we're going to work on the iPad. So, basically, you're going to download your Cricut Design Space app and open it up. And this is what it's going to look like. And when you open it up to your home screen, you've got a bar up here, and then you have all these projects right here, which are just the Make It Now projects that you are used to seeing in Cricut Design Space. When you want to create your own project, you just click right here. But before we do that, let's talk about all the buttons that are on your home page. So right here you have your little person, and he's going to tell you where you can set up your machine, or you can get some feedback from Cricut, or you can get some help and advice and things like that. That's just all the like programming type stuff, and he is right there, as well as your account to sign in and out is going to be right there. Then right next to it is a place where you can search um, your Cricut Access, so you can search a bunch of different projects through here. Um, there's just a bunch of different categories you can search through, and then you can also find your projects in the cloud. So if you click on your projects in the cloud, it'll take you to all the projects that you have saved. Once you have them saved, you can work on them wherever you are on any of your devices. The nice thing is that um, you could upload them on your computer and then you can go onto your devices and work on them. So make sure that you upload your images be before you put them into Cricut Design Space because um, you cannot upload them while you're in the app. But you can access them and that's where we were just at. So you can also save things to your device so when you save things, you can also save them right to your iPad or your phone so that you can um, work on those offline if you're going to be somewhere where you're not online. Okay, so then up here we have Home, Canvas, and Matte. We can go to our Canvas, and it's going to take us to anything that we've been working on. Um, but we're going to go back home, and we're going to create a new project, and this is going to prompt me to replace this or keep my previous project since I'm already working on something and we are going to replace it. So now we are on our mat and you can see right here, or on our canvas, you can see right here it says canvas. Um, and basically this is the same as Cricut Design Space, but there's just a couple different places that you need to know. These down here are normally up here on your Cricut Design Space, but now they're down here on your iPad. So down here is where all of your um, stuff is that you're gonna work with. So we're going to start with images, and like I said, you cannot insert your own images, but you can't you can't upload them right into this on your iPad, but you can access them. So if you upload them on your computer and save them, you can access them. So here's where you get to Cricut Access, and I'm going to pick an image that they have. So I'm just going to pick this umbrella right here, and it's going to go down here and be ready for me to insert it. But then I'm also going to show you, you can come up to this little filter right here, and you can filter what you're looking for. And I want to go to my uploaded images. That means the images that I actually uploaded when I was on my computer. So I'm going to go here, and I'm going to grab um, this mama bear image. And I'm going to insert both of these. So now we have an umbrella and mama bear. And and we have two different pieces and then I'm gonna do so that's how you insert images let's uh, close this and we have our images on there that's this button right here and then we're gonna add some text just so I can show you guys another layer so we're gonna work with three different layers we're gonna work with our own image a Cricut access image and then a piece of text so I'm just gonna click the Cricut alphabet uh, text just to keep it simple and type a word so let's type love and 
we'll deal with that. So I'm going to make him bigger so we can work with all three of these images. So basically every image has this square around it and it's down here is where you can make it bigger or smaller. Down here is where you can unlock it so that you can make it bigger or smaller but you don't have to keep its dimensions. So I'm going to lock that back up. And then you can delete it right there and you can rotate it right here. This is just all design work so even if we rotate it when it goes to the mat it's going to go back straight because this is all just for visual aid in the canvas. The mat is where we are going to put it where we actually want it on our mat. So the canvas is very um, visual. So this, just because this umbrella is blue does not mean that we have to cut it out of blue. It's just a way to make us remember that we want to use blue for this umbrella. So um, a tip is when you want to zoom in and out, you just use two fingers and you go in and out. And then um, when you want to go up to the corner, you just use two fingers and you can move around your board. So that's how you move around and zoom in and out. Okay, so I'm going to make this guy a little bit bigger and we're going to do a graphic that has mama bear over it. Now, right here is all your action, actions and edit pretty much are for each individual thing. So say we're doing our, our umbrella and we want to do some actions on it. We've got the action. So you open up actions and then it opens up all of your actions right here. So you're gonna you can either group, ungroup, attach, detach, weld, slice, flatten, unflatten, duplicate, isolate letters, or hide contour. I know that's a lot, but you'll get used to it as you play with them. Um, and then anything that's a little bit more extensive, I will go in, I've gone into on tutorials on on specific things like slicing is one that I have a tutorial on. So I'm gonna show you right now if we had both of these selected. I'm going to show you how to select. I'm going to show you how to select two objects. You're going to grab and you just slide over them, and that's how you select it. And if you noticed, the, some of these things popped back up. So when you only have one thing selected, um, some of these things don't don't show up. But when you select two, weld and slice show up because those are um, those are actions that include two different pieces. So if we wanted to slice these, I would select all of them and I would slice them. Once again, I know this is really fast for slicing, but I have a tutorial on what that even means. So undo and redo, since I want to go back and I don't want to have those sliced, um, your undo and redo buttons are right here and you can basically undo all the way to the beginning of your project and you can redo all the way to where you left off on your project. So that's really a, a safe way for you to remember that if you screw something up, you can just undo and redo. So other actions we have are flatten, weld, attach, group, duplicate, that's where those all are and you can work with those. If you watch some of my other tutorials, you'll know a little bit more about those. But um, the difference between like attaching and welding and things like that. So then for each object, we have an edit button and it looks a little different for each item. So since this is an image, you've got ways to change the width and the height and you can rotate it. These are all things that you can do with like calculations rather than just scaling so that you can get it perfect. Say you want it exactly four inches tall. You would just either do 4.5 or four and say you want this to be exactly seven inches. We can make it seven and this little lock means that it's going to stay um, scaled to what it started out. It's not gonna be skewed and kind of crazy. So unless you unlock it, that's gonna stay the same. So you can also vertically flip or horizontally flip. Um, you can change the positions, which means on the grid. So you can, if you want it to be specifically right here and you want to line these up specifically, you can make their, um, their coordinates the exact same. So you saw when I clicked on the love just now, all these different options. That's because this is a text and texts have, okay, this is a way to skew it which I never knew, and we just found that out together. <laughs> okay, so love is a text, so now you've got a lot more options under your edit. Let's see about actions. I think actions are the same too. Actions have one more option, which is isolate letters. And basically all that does is 
makes your letters so that you can move them individually. And I want to undo that because I don't want to do that right this second. But that's for when you're doing cursive and you want them to like flow. That is the best way to do that. Okay, so let's go back to edit. And once we have our edit bar open for love, wait, I want to undo enough so that they are one piece. Okay. So we're going to edit. Now you've got all these different options. So it's just like your text bar. You can change the text. You can, um, and under your text, you can see that this is how you find the system text and all your text and just the Cricut text. System text is text that your iPad has on its iPadness. <laughs> okay, you can change the style. That's where you can bold, italic change it to writing, writing italic, alignment. So if you're dealing with a lot more words, you can align them, basically just like basic word um, design right here. But then over here, you've got the same things. You can position them, you can vertically flip them, you can horizontally flip them, all that good stuff. And then you can change the height and stuff like that. So right here, syncing is dealing with our layers. So let's go to layers before we do syncing. So when we open up our layers, you can notice that you can, these are green when they're open. You can just close them out if you don't wanna see them. So layers opens up our layers bar on the right hand side of our screen. And each individual thing has a layer. So we've got our love layer, our umbrella layer, and our mama bear layer. And you can also see that when the umbrella layer is under the mama bear layer, it means that it's literally gonna be under it. Um, the love layer is on top, so that's gonna go over all of those and that's how layers work when they're on the top they're on the top in the middle the middle and the bottom the bottom a way to arrange them is under actions um, under edit arrange and you can move them to the front if you wanted and then what that's going to do is it's going to move that layer up to the top and then this layer is also going to be on the top so when we're in our layers, each individual layer can be worked with. So we can click on our umbrella layer, and that's another way for you to select your layer. Say I can't get to that love for some reason, I could just come over here and click the layer, and it will highlight that, and then now it will be selected. Okay, so once you select a layer, it gives you these three options down here to either hide it or duplicate it. So now we have two, or we could delete it. And when we're hiding it, it's not going to cut at all, but it's going to stay on your design mat. So that's a great way to save pieces that you don't want to cut right now, but you want to go back and cut later. Okay, so we're going to, right now this actually has two parts of this layer. It has a background, and I want to hide this background because I don't want the background. So I'm going to hide the background so I just have the blue. And you can see right here that this is set to cut and this is set to not see. So if we wanted to change this, we'd click this little arrow and you can set it up to write or score or print. So, and you can also change the color of your umbrella. And that's basically how layers work. So then we're gonna hide that. And then we have our undo and redo we talked about. Now camera is a little bit different. Camera is something that only you can use on devices and it's really actually a pretty cool concept. So if we turn on our camera, it's going to turn our iPad into a camera. Right? Right. Let's see. Where's, is there something blocking it? Where's our camera at? Oh, because our iPad is upside down. <laughs> Let's turn this over. <laughs> that was what was it was doing. Okay. So don't mind all the stuff on my desk, but you can take a project that you're working on. Say we're working on this cup right here and we wanted to see the cup and we wanted to see where we were gonna put our design. We could put it right on our cup. But something else I like to have is if I'm doing a pattern like this journal, I like to put it in here and then I can play with the colors and see if this is something that will work on there. If it's not, I'm gonna open up my layers and I'm gonna change this to a color that I think will look better with this. And then I can make sure that I cut my vinyl in that color. So that's a really cool um, technique that you can do. And see like this mama bear, we would know that if we were putting this on our journal, black would just not work out very well. So it's just a great visual aid 
to decide if that's something that we want to do. So let's try to make it like purple. And we might not have thought that purple would look good on this, but it looks pretty cool. So you could just, you can get creative with it if you want. And that's what the camera's for. It's basically just for you to see a visual of what you're doing. And it kind of has a lot to do. It's kind of like snap map, which we'll go into in a second. Okay, so let's turn our camera off and let's get ready to make this puppy. So we're gonna go down here to make it. Settings right here is where you can set up your metric units, your grids, or your smart guides. Smart guides are these little orange lines that pop up and they line pieces up so that if you're trying to center things, it'll naturally want to center it. So if we wanted to keep that like that, it would center it for us. If that's annoying to you and you really want it just like a little bit over and the smart guide is just keep snapping it, you can go over here and you turn off your smart guides. You can also set up your grid so that there is no grid if you're more of a want to see exactly how it's gonna look. And you can change your metric units to, you know, people who use real numbers instead of American units that we use. Okay, so we're gonna go to make it and once we make it, it says my image is too large because clearly I am working with some big sizes that I'm not really paying attention to right this second, but we'll just make it smaller and we'll go to make it. And what this is gonna do, it's gonna open up our map and now we're eventually gonna go over, we'll be on a map now and you can see that this button up here says we're on our map. Now what it does is it gives you the different boards because we have a purple, a pink, and a blue. And if you want to know how to save space and product and you don't have to use free boards, I will do another video and that will be in my snap map video. So make sure to check that out. If you are using snap map, this is where your button is right here. But I'm not going to go into it because I'm going to do a whole video on it. But right now is where you will choose what you're actually using. If you're using iron on, make sure this is like the number one thing that always goes wrong you forget to turn it backwards if you're doing iron on so let's say we're going to do iron on for mama bear and love and the umbrella are going to be vinyl for some reason we're using three different projects um we are going to make sure that our machine is set to iron on but our this is also going to prompt us that we set it to iron that we didn't set it to iron on and our machine is set to iron on once you're also in here, you can grab this and move it around. This has a big thing to do with saving on your product because you want to move, say these are crooked, we want to move this like this and move it up to the corner as much as we can or down to the bottom as much as we can. So see this, this is taking up more space than if we were to just straighten it out and move it to the bottom or to the very top. It's not letting me go super to the top because of the L but say we just have a scrap and we want to use a scrap, we can move it to the bottom. And then we're going to click continue. And this is not set up to hook up to my computer right, or my device right now. So it would just take you over to cut and you would follow the directions there and then you'd be good to go. So I hope that helped you guys out with the Cricut. And I hope that that really, um, I know you guys asked for me to do this tutorial. So if you guys have any more things that you want me to show you, let me know, especially in design space, because I want you guys to understand this fully because it's really fun when you can get this down and figure it all out. All right, guys. Love you. Bye.